Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So real quick, uh, a couple episodes ago, uh, remember I said that I didn't think the uh, pocket, the Osmo Pocket was charging? I don't think it was. The, um, the power bank, the, uh, the, the cable wasn't plugged in all the way, though I'm pretty sure I remember seeing it charging earlier. Um, but I can tell if it's charging or not, because if it is, the little battery indicator is green and if it's not charging it's not green it's like white so it's charging now it's at 52 percent so at the end of this episode and we'll see if it changes hopefully for the positive side because i'm almost positive i didn't mean to say that almost certain that um i've done this already before where i had it plugged into the power bank and it was keeping it charged so anyway so let's get into the next wine chart yes everything's going all right all right so uh we're on to red wines now and uh let's see here let's let's get over to here and so this this uh this little wine here came from psalm select and it is the uh 2015 macarico macati aliganico del vuture um so this is a southern Italian wine. Uh, the area is uh, Basilicata. So that's that's kind of what, that's the, uh, not the toe of the boot. It's kind of like between the, the toe and between Campania, um, which is just south of Lazio. So um, it's kind of like that overarching, kind of the arch, kind of, but around that area. I'll probably, hopefully I'll put a, uh, I'll put a, um, map up to show you where it's at but uh, alianico is definitely a um the, like the grape of that area and a company they do a good job with it too so uh let's see here i uh, paid oh yeah how much did i pay for this so i have down that i paid 21.45 so it was probably like a 20 dollar bottle of wine and um so let's get into it yeah what did i say the vintage was 2015, it's down to 51%. So it might be plugged in uh, and charging, but it's not, <laughs> it's, it's going the wrong direction. So it might be that the uh, recording in that 4K60 is just taking up way too much power. What I'll probably have to do is um, try it at 1080 instead and see if it takes up less power because I know that on, on 4K it heats up a lot. Oh, that just popped. I'll, I'll put it over here so I remember to, to not use it. Um, all right, so let's just get into the wine. Oh, um, let's see here. So, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see, Alionica wines can sometimes be a little impregnativo or demanding to drink, uh, impreg in, in, not impregnativo, impreg in, impregnativo, because you don't pronounce the G. Um, that's why it's Alianico, not Aglianico. Uh, today's Alianico del Futuro uh, from Macarico doesn't lack for power. Uh, in fact, I'd say it's more structured and substantial than 99.9% .9 of wines at this price point. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right, Alianico uh, is important, and Basilicata's Monte Vulture, which climbs to 4,300 feet, is arguably the, its greatest terroir. Uh, in his exhaustive native wine grapes of Italy, writer and educator Ian Degada, who is an awesome dude, I got to meet him. I got to see my text on him too for like all of like three seconds. Uh, details how some experts believe Alianico arrived via the Bay of Naples, 
with the colonizing Greeks in the 8th century, others believe, 8th century BC, others believe it was a wild grape native to the Italian peninsula that was domesticated like another indigenous Italian variety called Sangiovese. Modern day mutations of the grape are found across most of southern Italy, but its greatest expressions are found in Campania, especially the volcanic Tawas inland of inland regions such as Taberno and Taurasi and Basilicata. Uh, as the Gata asserts, as great as great at the wines of Tarasi and Taberno can be, they are often bested in blind tastings by the superstars coming out of the Volture area in Basilicata. All right, so um, no pressure that this is a good wine. So right before I did this, I was like, maybe I should have done this wine last because Alianico tends to be one of the highest tannic grapes, but I've got um, kind of unusual uh, grape from, uh, I think it's Piedmont, Syrah and Brunello. So they're all pretty powerful wines I've got going on here. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, winemaking. So let's see here. Let's talk about some of the stuff. So, uh, so the, the, uh, the vineyards are situated at particularly high elevations on the alto or upper slopes of Volture, above 450 meters on average, so about 13, 1400 feet. Uh, the soils are volcanic tuff, called tufo in Italian, which causes some confusion among soil geeks because tufa, with an A, and tufo, T-U-F-F-E-A-U, -F -F -E are words widely used to describe limestone soils. Tufo, with an O, is volcanic rock, full of silica and other minerals, and whether you believe in the concept of minerality in wine, it is not impossible. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're starting to get into actual tasting notes. And then let's see, this wine is subjected to about two weeks of skin maceration during fermentation, followed by a year of aging and used French oak barriques. When they say barriques, they're, they're meaning the Bordeaux size, 225 liters. Because a French barrel could be anything, but usually it's a 225. 227, no, 228, 220. Seven for Burgundy. Um, let's see, in the glass, yeah, that's more about tasting notes. Let's, let's skip that. All right. So some red fruit on this. What was that? 2015 on this, right? Yeah. For 20 bucks, basically. So like cherry, red fruit, cherry, kind of tart on the nose. Touch of raspberry. Touch of earth on it. There isn't a whole lot on, on the nose. I mean, I get those are the things I get. And a uh There's something else I can't really identify. But it's like almost like a sweeter, almost like a plum, almost like a prune. Yeah. Date. Wow. Besides, this is a big wine. I can start feeling the tannin really starting to like creep up. Um, very spice driven, uh, and and the the red fruits are kind of tart, but it's also really woody, like 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 you bit into a piece of wood. Uh, very um, brambly on 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 the palate. Very spice driven. So kind of peppery, um, clove, cinnamon, that kind of stuff. Um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, very tart cherry, very tart raspberry, um, but it's red fruit driven. Uh, but very tart on it. Acid's pretty 
somewhat elevated. It's not like high, but I'm gonna call it medium plus. Um, they do say the alcohol is 13%, and yeah, it seems like it's around that 13%. It's not really high alcohol. Um, that might be from the higher elevation, so it may not go through um, a lot. It may not get a lot of heat. If I say it's cooler climate, so the, the sugars don't go like stupidly high. Um, but yeah, it says, oh wow, it says that, um, let's see, the vineyards can climb high as 700 meters in some places, and as such, this is a cool climate, providing the already late ripening Alianico with an extremely long growing season. It's not uncommon for it to be harvested in mid or even late November. I didn't even read that part just till now. It's very like Pier 1. Remember the Pier 1s? World Market, I guess now. I mean, they're not the, the same idea as World Market. Um, that just kind of like that aromas you get, like the florals, the the spices, the the cardamoms and and the and the and the um, the clove and and the cinnamon type stuff. Really powerful on on the palate more than the nose, but after you start tasting it, you start smelling it, it starts really being all mixed up together. Potpourri, that kind of stuff. Really tasty wine, and uh, I'm digging it a whole lot, especially I only paid 20 bucks, well, plus tax and all that. I'm really digging this wine. All right, so uh, that's going to do it for this wine. Um, so it's at 50%, so it, it looks like it's it's kind of holding its own a little bit. Probably I probably slowed down that. It's draining the battery thing. <clears throat> All right, so click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below uh, to learn more about the wine. Um, hopefully, I'll have the, the Psalm Select tasting notes because um, sometimes they, they go away after a while. So if it's been a long time since I bought the wine, um, you might see it on Google, but then when you click the link, it's like not there. Uh, so, um, so hopefully, this, this tasting notes will stay up there. If I can find the actual, uh, if I can find the producer's website, I'll do that too. Uh, Click over here to send uh, me some ducats to help offset the Oregon trip. All of a sudden my nose is stopping up, which sucks. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.